Hello everyone. In this chapter, we will learn about Fresnel effect. Before we begin with any definition or any explanation of Fresnel effect, this image depicts Fresnel effect very well. The reason why you are able to see the rocks underneath in this region and not in this region is because of Fresnel effect. The reflection in the farther area is more than the nearer area. And this image is taken by L.S. Kravik. And here is his website address. I just wanted to mention the name and give the credit. And now we will begin with the definition of Fresnel effect. A French engineer and physicist, Augustine Jean Fresnel, mentioned that the objects like glass and water exhibit both reflection and refraction. And the amount of light reflected or the amount of reflection depends on the angle of incidence or the angle of eye. Suppose this is the surface of a lake and this is the bottom of the lake. And there are certain stones settled on the surface of this lake. And there are fishes floating in the water as well. And at the corner of this lake you are standing and looking straight down inside the water. And the reason you can see the things inside pond and water when you are looking straight down is because the reflection is minimum or there is no reflection when you look straight down or when the angle between your eye and the surface of water is minimum. So consider that this is the normal of the surface of water and this is the angle of incidence, the angle of eye for this point of the surface. You will be able to see through the water, the things inside the pond or lake, because at this point, the angle between the normal and your eye is minimum. So the amount of reflection depends on the angle between your eye and the normal of the surface. For this point of the surface, this is the angle between the normal and the eye. So due to reflection, you will be able to see slightly through the water. And for this point of the surface, this angle will be more. And therefore, the amount of reflection will be more as well. And due to more reflection, you will not be able to see through the surface, through the water. And therefore, the amount of reflection is proportional to the angle of incidence or angle between normal and the eye. When we will write the shader code, we will need something that can give us changing value when the angle between view direction and the normal of the surface changes. And surely we will not be able to use the value of this angle directly. So what we will use is something that we have been using for almost every lighting shader. If that didn't ring the bell, we will use the dot product between N and V. So N dot V will give us a changing value based on the angle between N and V. And as we know, the value of dot product varies from negative 1 to 1. So when both the vectors are in the same direction, the value becomes 1. When they are at the 90 degree, value becomes 0. And when they are opposite to each other, the value becomes negative 1. And when they are at 90 degree again, the value of dot product is 0. And then it comes back to 1 again. So to control the amount of reflection based on the dot product, we just need the value in the range of 0 to 1 so that we can control the amount of reflection with this value. This will be similar to the property that we have defined in our shaders, which is reflection or refraction factor. When this value is 0, there is no reflection. When this value is 1, there will be full reflection. So one thing that we will have to add in our formula is max dot product of n comma v 
comma zero. So this will give us the range between one to zero because as soon as the value of dot product is below zero, max function will start returning zero. We can use the max function to satisfy or to need what we want. But in order to understand or to learn, we will use another function that is provided by CG shader language, which is saturate. Now we will understand what saturate function does. What saturate function does is it returns a value in the range of 0 to 1. If you pass any value, it will check the value and if it is greater than 1, then the saturate function will return 1. And if it is below 0, the saturate function will return 0. And if the value is in between that range, it will return the value itself. For example, if we pass negative 1 to saturate, saturate function will check that this value is below 0. And in that condition, the function will return 0. When we pass 2 to this function, saturate function will check if this value is below 0. It is not. And then it will check if it is above 1. In that condition, it is yes then it will return 1. And if we pass 0.5 to it, it will check if 0 0.5 is smaller than 0, which is not, and then it will check if 0 0.5 is greater than 1, which is false as well. And in this situation, it will return 0 0.5. So in short, saturate function returns the value in the range of 0 to 1. So instead of max, we can use saturate function and we can pass the dot product inside it. And this as well will give us the value in the range of 0 to 1. Another thing that we have to keep in our mind that in this situation, when the vector normal and view vector are in the same direction, that means the angle between two vectors is zero, the dot product will give us value equals to one, which means if we use this value directly, there will be full reflection in this situation, which is the reverse of what we want, because in this situation, reflection should be zero. And in this situation, when there is a 90 degree angle between the normal vector and the view vector, the value is zero. But what we want in this situation, reflection should be one. There should be maximum reflection. So we will have to add something in our formula. So this is the formula we have so far. If we add 1 minus, this will give us what we are looking for. For example, when the vector n and vector v are in the same direction, saturate n dot v, where n dot v is equals to 1, and saturate 1 will give us value 1. And when we will add 1 minus in front of it, 1 minus 1 is equals to 0. And this is the value that we are looking for. When vector v and vector n are in the same direction, the reflection should be zero. And in this situation, where vector n and vector v are at 90 degree to each other, the dot product gives us a value zero. And when it is given to saturate function, it will return us value equals to zero. And one minus zero is equals to one. And this is what we are looking in this situation. That in this situation, the reflection should be maximum. And here it should be minimum. So this becomes our final formula for calculating Fresnel. And we can use this formula to write our shader. But whenever we write a shader, we try to give more and more control to the user for better visual quality. And in this shader, we want to add another property, 
which is Fresnel width by which we will be able to control the width of Fresnel on the surface. So ordinarily if this is a plane and here is the eye or the viewer either you are looking at the surface or there is a camera that is looking at the surface. In this situation there will be no reflection in this point and there will be maximum reflection at this point of the surface. So if we want to show the amount of reflection, this will be the scale of reflection onto the surface. The width of this area is the amount of reflection. That means the reflection is 1 here and reflection is 0 here. And if we look at the same effect on a sphere, the Fresnel effect will be spread like this onto the surface. And what we want is we want to control the range of Fresnel. Define the width up to which we want to see the Fresnel effect. If this is the width, we will see the reflection up to this range. In other words, we want to squeeze this amount of reflection, this full range that we saw here into a smaller range. We want to squeeze it, we do not want to cut it because if we cut it or trim it, the reflection will suddenly disappear. So there will be 0.5 reflection here and there will be no reflection after this point, which we do not want. We want to squeeze this range so that this complete triangle fits in a width that we define. And what it would look like for a sphere that we will define the width and the reflection will be restricted in that range. And we will call this property as Fresnel width. And in order to do this, we will use a function that we have used in the past. And that function is smooth step. We have used this function when we created circle pattern and we created the faded circle pattern as well. And there is a there is a full chapter in which we explain the smooth step function. But to revise it again, smooth step function is used to squeeze and stretch the range. For example, if this is the range of amount of reflection that we are getting by our formula, we will be able to squeeze this range within the limits that we define. What it means is, for example, if for 0 to 1, there is a 0 0.5 value and we will squeeze this value within the range of 1 to 0.5. The final value will be squeezed to half as well and the final result will be 0 0.25. If still you can't remember what it does, I would recommend you to revise that chapter. So this formula will give us a float value which we will call Fresnel and then to restrict the range we will pass this value to the smooth step function. And smooth step function takes three parameters. One is the lower range value. Second is the higher range value. And the third parameter is the value that we want to tweak, which is a float value. So for this, we will pass Fresnel value because we want to tweak Fresnel the higher range will be 1 because the maximum reflection will be 1 and the lower range will be 1 minus width. What does this mean is, for example, if this is the plane onto which we are applying the Fresnel effect and we want to restrict the range in 0.3 area. So this is the width and the value of width is 0.3 because if we provide one value, it will be spread over the complete surface. This is a value similar to texture coordinate value because this complete space is in the range of 0 to 1. So if we provide 0.3 value as the width, the higher range will be 1 and the lower range will be 1 minus 0.3 is equals to 0.7. So the Fresnel will be restricted in range of 1 to 0 0.07. What this means is, if this is the plane onto which we want to apply our Fresnel effect 
and these are the UV coordinate values which are defined in the range of 0 to 1. So if we restrict something, we restrict the value in this range. And the amount of reflection that we are going to see is from 0 to 1. And what we want is we want to squeeze this value. So if we define the width which is up to this area, that means we want to squeeze this range within this area. For example, if this width is 0 0.3, we will restrict the range from 1 to 1 minus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.7 to 1. So, in this case, the complete reflection range will be restricted from 1 to 0 0.7. So we will see the reflection up to this area on the surface. There will be maximum reflection in this area and then it will keep on decreasing and it will end here. So we have squeezed this complete range which was like this before within this range. So that is what smooth step means. So this will squeeze the range and we will get the value back in Fresnel variable. And this will be the squeezed range of the Fresnel and we will use this range to define the amount of reflection. So these are the two lines that we will use in our shader and based on which we will add the amount of reflection onto the surface. So that is it for this chapter. In the next chapter we will start writing our Fresnel shader and we will start using these lines which we understood in this chapter. So that is it. Thank you so much for listening.